Welcome to the Class of the Little Sass podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Millspaw, best-selling author and award-winning motivational speaker with over 20 years in the personal development industry. I believe that the more you know, the more you grow. With each podcast episode, I will educate and empower you, girlfriend to girlfriend style, on how to create a happy life from motherhood guidance, career and business advice, to feeling confident in your relationships and everything in between. This is Real Talk Radio. Let's jump right into today's episode. Hello, friends. It's been a minute. It feels like it anyway. So much life has happened between episodes that I feel like it's been months, not weeks. But today's episode, I want to talk about 15 things empaths need to thrive. And you could switch out the word to survive because I truly believe these are survival techniques, not just for thriving. But a lot of us just scrape by through life, feel content, do what we can to survive, and forget that we were born to thrive. The Lord wanted us to shine bright not just get through life mundane, barely making it by the skin of our teeth, kind of like, you know, just that dangling by a thread kind of mindset. That's not truly living, is it? You know, if you think about the past month, past two months, past three months of your life, you know, a lot of you, as I'm recording this, our, our kids are back in school and things might be more reconnected again to a routine and getting back to enjoying the beauty of fall and gosh, here comes the holidays. That's all this last quarter of 2023 will go quick. It always does. It just is what it is. But I truly want to focus on things that will make us go to the next level, that will take us to the next level, will just empower us. And this isn't just for empaths. It's not just for HSPs, which stands for highly sensitive people. This is for everyone. Everyone can benefit from this, but if you're an empath, to me, it's survival, not just thriving. It's to survive, literally must have like food, oxygen, water, must have kind of thing, sleep, all the things. So let's kind of dive right in. I want to, you know, what really pulled me into this episode topic today was I've moved home to Traverse City, Michigan in the last couple of weeks. In fact, I think it's been 12 days since I since the moving van showed up. And there's just something about these last few days, this past weekend, we were at the Northwestern Michigan Fairgrounds, which I grew up going to as a little girl to the fair. And of course, there's the rides and all the things. There wasn't this, this wasn't that type of event, but I recognized the the grounds that we went to. And of course they look different. There's barns, it's the the landscaping's really well kept. There was something about just being in the fresh air. It was probably about 70 degrees and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. You know that kind of fall day in the Midwest where the air just feels crisp and clean. And you can feel just that sense of excitement of what's to come into another season and it was a craft show that my my sister was a part of and if you haven't found her items online you are missing out i could put a link i'm gonna put a link in the show notes because we're bringing this up i'll put a link to shauna's so creative design decor because she does a lot of unique items one-of-a-kind items she recycles or upcycles i guess is the right word turning trash into treasure more or less um, and giving things a new look bringing old things to life again. So we were enjoying ourselves. And I say we, as in my daughter and myself, we decided to spend a good four hours the first Friday evening of her show. She was there Saturday as well. And it was so nostalgic for me. It's new to my daughter. She's been to the fairgrounds during the summers when she would visit. Yes. She's gone on, you know, rides, but there wasn't a rides at this time. It was just, let's go. Let's hang out with my sister, Shauna. Let's soak up some some fall energy, get some fun food from the food trucks, shop around, get some new scents, you know, all the fun things and the fall stuff that's out and truly just soak up 
all the good energy that Traverse City has to offer. And it really does. It's night and day different than being in Las Vegas. Night and day. Can't even put it into words. I was like, why am I having, why do I feel like I'm vibrating at this ultimate high? Like what is up? So I did a deep dive, you know, like, yes, I'm happy to be around family again, but what is it? It's not just being around family because family would come out to Vegas and visit me and I didn't feel this way. So it's not just that. It's the environment and why just because it feels like home. I mean, honestly, it's not been home for 34 years. So what is it? What is it about Northern Michigan that does this to me? So I wanted to go kind of deeper into what is going on with me and how it can help other empaths out there as well. And just do a checklist. Where in your life are you not hitting some some really necessary stuff? to make you feel whole, 100% whole again, feeling connected, feeling just alive, where you're vibrating at a level of, of happiness you didn't even know existed. And it's probably been a while since you've been there. If you're like me, I just started to go numb when I was living in Vegas. I was just so unhappy over a period of time, uh, one failed relationship after another. And feeling disconnected and not happy with the environment and feeling like I'm a part of a superficial space. And it's, and it's, you know, Vegas is not for everybody and it's, and is for some people. There's a 3 million people that reside there. And I was happy when I first moved there it was one of those things that I it was a good place to start over a good place to just kind of get away from everything, reflect and figure yourself out, learn to grow and expand. But after 15 years, I was done. I was so done. So let's just kind of take a deep dive. I want you to come back to life again with me. Enjoy this journey with me because I'm going on 50. I'll be 50 next spring. How does this last chapter get to be? And, and I really, truly see it that way. It sounds morbid, but I want it to be the best chapter. Like take all the things I've learned over the last 49 plus years and apply it for the next you know, decade, two decades, three decades, however long Jesus sees me on this planet. You know, it's just really up to him. We don't know. It could be tomorrow, but we want to be prepared and grateful for every step he's shown you. Sometimes it's so hard to be in that struggle phase. You could be in that struggle phase. And I felt like that for, for the last two months of moving and the exhaustion of moving and downsizing and relearning. You know, every day we're tired. I couldn't figure out why my daughter and I are so tired all the time. Well, it's because everything's new. You get in the car and you're, you know, and you live someplace for a long time. You're on autopilot most of the time. You're going to the same grocery store. You're doing the same errands. You're tra driving on the same roads. You're ordering the same food. Now we're in a new environment and it's like, now what? Even when I pull out of the driveway, I have to think, okay, wait, where, where do I want to go? Which route do I want to take? You know, like really think it through and I'll be honest, even though I'm from here originally, I was 15 when I moved away. So I didn't drive here very often unless I was renting a car, you know, visiting my sister during the summer months or winter months. So I have to use MapQuest. Yes, I have to use the Maps app and get around in some places that I'm not familiar with. And it's all new stuff, new place to where to get gas, new place to get groceries, new place to, to run your errands, new place to, to hit Target. Where's Target? Got to know where that's at at all times. So it's a lot. It's a lot. You first wake up and you're like, where am I? You know, <laughs> similar, similar bedroom furniture, but everything's so different. Where am I? The air is so much more fresh and, and it's quieter here and I sleep better. What's going on? So let me take you through these 15 things, guys, you can't live without. You cannot. And if you want to thrive, you must incorporate these into your life. So the first one is time and solitude to get grounded and reconnect with yourself. This is imperative. And I've noticed I've spent a lot of time recently with my daughter. She's here. Her boyfriend hasn't moved to Traverse City with us yet. So she's underfoot. She's looking for a new career. She's in between jobs right now. She's finding her way. She's literally running errands as I, as I record this and figuring her way around the city and, you know, reconnecting with herself. I don't get a lot of alone time. Unless you count sleeping, you know, or when I go to bed and shut the door and clock out literally, but that's not true alone time as, as 
us empaths know we need to not have any energy around us at all, like not even in the house. Alone time is truly getting that uninterrupted time with your own thoughts. And it has to be, you know, a good chunk of time, not 10 minutes. I mean, even though if that's all you can get, get it, girl. <laughs> 10 minutes is important. But the key thing is, is, you know, I'm not trying to avoid people, but it does mean you have to just put this on your calendar, carve out time to be alone. Even if it's just to go for a walk, pop in your podcast, your AirPods, whatever it is, if you're listening to me right now and you're doing a walk, high five, sister, that's perfect. That's what I love to do also. You need that time to get grounded. You got to shake off other people's energy and reconnect with you and feel just your own emotions. So put that in the calendar today, right now. Put in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. Where do I get my time to myself? Is it a bike ride? Is it just a short drive up the coast? You know, like I find myself doing this more and more when I run errands, I want to make sure I drive by the bay. I'll, I'll take a route that goes by the bay versus more inland because I want to see the water, you know, just driving, seeing things that are beautiful to me and make it a priority. This is a non-negotiable. When will you get your alone time? And I'm not counting sleep. Even if it's just a bath, run a bath, long shower, however long your hot water heater will let you, <laughs> you know, it just really does depend on that. Playing in the grass what before winter comes, you know, playing in your garden planting some new mums. It's the fall time, you know, our flowers, doing something that makes you reconnect with yourself. Even if it's just reading a calm book in a chair that you love, pop on the fireplace, light a candle. Where can you get this? Cause this is number one for a reason, time and solitude to get grounded and reconnect with yourself. Number two, plenty of rest. Now I am the queen of naps. I've noticed I've not had to take as many since my move. Um, maybe I'm getting a good night's sleep. Maybe I'm sleeping too much. Who knows? Um, my schedule's off a little bit. I've definitely been sleeping in more than I normally do, but we need this. There's no shame in taking a nap. You're not weak. There's nothing wrong with you. Sometimes it's only 20 minutes. It's that power nap that just helps you kind of shut off the extra overstimulation, especially if you're a highly sensitive person, you know, an empath and an HSP are, have similar things going on, but they're not identical. But you don't realize when you're super sensitive, you're overstimulated easily. Your nervous system is on overdrive all the time. Even if the littlest things you could pick up are certain lighting will do it for you or strong scents, like ca certain, ca you know, candles or something that's overwhelming. Maybe it's the person you work with's perfume and you're like, oh Lord, you know, like this is just too much for me. Sometimes it's a repetitive sound over and over and over and over again. I could never work in a casino. I used to say that all the time. Just hearing that ding, 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 ding constantly would drive me crazy. Empaths are very sensitive to repetitive sounds. You know, that clicking noise maybe of a fan or whatever could start to tax on your nervous system. This is just how you're wired. Again, no shame. It can result in overstimulation. Take the break, sisters. Take the break. Set your alarm if you have to. I need 20 minutes to myself. Go lay down. I get right in my bed and I make my bed every day. I don't care. I want to climb right in under those blankets and just curl up and just shut out the world. Let me reboot. It's just like turning off your phone, recharging your phone or rebooting your phone or your computer laptop. Control alt delete, girls. Recharge. It's beautiful. Sleep is like a healing elixir for us. And it's just a vital time for us to turn off our highly active minds and just recharge. If you're not getting good sleep at night, check too. You know, you, we, I've done a lot of research on sleep. We do uh, 90 minute sleep cycles. So you find yourself waking up in the night. Chances are you've already gone through one or two sleep cycles. As long as you get four to five, and it depends on you, each person is different. Four to five 90 minute sleep cycles will make a huge difference in your life. Just getting that, you know, from REM sleep, that REM sleep to that deep, deep, deep sleep, you know, when you're, and then you're coming back again and having some really weird dreams. Um, overall, that's, that's key. Make sure you're getting that. Maybe you're not going to bed early enough, or perhaps you're not even um, getting in the, 
that no blue light before you sleep and so on. Um, that is the key. So you want to, you know, read a book instead or make sure you're not staring at your phone right before you go to sleep. It takes a long time for our brains to regroup and just kind of turn off from that blue light that we get from our screens. So kind of take a look at that. Maybe it's a hot bath or something that just helps shut your, shut your brain down for the day. Number three, safe, supportive, and loving relationships. This is also a key to why I've been feeling more balanced lately. I'm surrounded by family again. Not all my family, because that's a really, really long list, but I am, of course, around my daughter. I always was. I got two sisters close by. Mom is in town for the year, you know, in the for the next month. I'm gonna see more family later this month as well, cousins and aunts. I'm going to hopefully connect with daddy soon. Um, I have nieces and nephews in the area. It's just different. It's different having sisters just stop by or mom calling quick to say, are you home? She drops some things off. You know, it's just different. And there's that energy of it's okay. It's okay to be carry. You know, it's just that, you know, a lot of them are empaths as empaths. We can have these codependent relationships because they love our, our caring nature. So we can attract those type of people. I'm looking for safe, supportive, and loving. You know, looking for people that just love you unconditionally. And that's what keeps you grounded. If it's a church group or people you know from even childhood, high school friends. I've got friends here that I've known since I was little, itty, itty bitty diaper size, Carrie. And it's so important to have these healthy relationships who are empathic and and I apologize for all the noise my daughter's making when she just got home. If you can hear her in the background, <laughs> um, we're just, you know, more, we're, we're partnered with someone who values us, someone we can trust and rely on. We have the opportunity to flourish. So even if it's not a roman romantic relationship, it needs to be friendships, family, whatever that looks like. And not all of us have the benefit of having family close by that's healthy. Some of you have family close by that isn't so healthy you know to keep your boundaries and keep those people at bay. Number four, a spiritual practice, whether it's your faith base, doing mindfulness or meditation, somewhere to connect deeply to your intuition. Have you ever had some, you know, I've just, this happened today. I was thinking about someone and I looked and he commented on my Facebook an hour ago. It was like the weirdest thing. Um, you're thinking about someone and you want to reach out and text them. And then you're like, eh, and then you look and they've texted you first. Why do you think that happens? As empaths, we're so good at tapping into energy. We naturally pick it up that sometimes if we're too busy and we're just going, going, going all the time, we're not connected to that intuition. How else are you going to pick up God's voices, quote voice, I should say voices, <laughs> that internal voice, you know, so it's in that peaceful moment where the Lord just kind of taps you on the shoulder and makes you look up and you read something that's meant for you, or you have this, this, you know, just calmness where you immediately think of someone and they call you or text you, or God tells you to do something. It happens to me all the time, but only when I'm getting quiet. So find a way to connect connecting to that, whether it's just sitting in church on a Sunday morning or having Bible study with, with your friends or peers, whether it's online, virtual, or in person, small group with your church, connect, get quiet, let the Lord truly speak to you. Give him, give him a moment. We can't hear all of this when we're going hundred miles an hour. You know, it's just not possible. So again, have some type of spiritual practice. And I don't mean that in a new age sense, because you know, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of all lords. He is your one and only master. So you know where I feel and stand on that. But when I say spiritual practice, I mean, what does it look like? To me, sometimes it's just listening to a podcast, a Bible study while I'm getting ready in the morning. And that, that word comes through, that one piece I needed to hear in that moment comes through and, and, and loud that touches my soul. Maybe it is that, that calming, getting in nature, solitude time, or, or if it's just, you know, 
working out in the morning, whatever that calmness looks like. So let's jump into number five, because that's even more right along the same veins of what we're talking about. And that's time in nature. This is another reason why I think I feel more balanced and happy these days is I'm getting that just walking outside. It's not that dusty, hot Vegas air that feels like you can't breathe or take a deep breath. It's that that crisp fall day that I was talking about in the beginning. Going to a park, sitting on a picnic table and just listening to the birds and the trees, just taking in that surrounding. If you can't do a full-blown hike or a bike ride or mountain bike somewhere, take a quick walk, you know, a brisk walk to the mailbox and make it a long walk, you know, uh, just kind of go the opposite direction around the neighborhood to get to the mailbox. I don't know, whatever you can do to just kind of soak it all up. Enjoy it. I'm so grateful for the greenery and the trees. And I have so many empath friends that agree with me because they have also moved where they get more nature because nature is healing. And it just helps you get out of the noise and the stimulation around you. Nature is also a place for empaths to reconnect with themselves. It's just grounding. Water is my key thing. Even if I just need a few minutes and it doesn't even matter the temperature, of course, I wouldn't do this in the dead of winter, but popping off my sandals and just walking in the beach, just that shoreline of the water, the water is so grounding. It's probably why I love bubble baths so much. It's the grounding of, of nature and water and, you know, grass. If you can go barefoot in the grass, it's so grounding for you. Now, number six is an environment you love indoors too. It's not just being outside. It's so imperative to have a space that's clean, inspiring, calming. If it's messy, disorganized home, it makes me feel super chaotic and overwhelmed. I get overwhelmed. So naturally I took as much time off as I possibly could this past month and a half to get organized again because I cannot move forward and grow and get this book published and take on the next client project I have waiting in the wings. There's about three or four projects coming up that are important and going to take a lot of time for me. And I know that Miss Carrie needs to put her books on her bookshelf and organize her knickknacks and vacuum and clean and hang curtains. I need to feel like my environment is not chaos too. Because when I need to think clear, strategize in business, all the things that I do in the, as a consultant and business strategist, I need my space to be clean, calm, very, you know, sparse almost, not a lot of clutter. I need simple, clean lines. Um, even if it's just, you know, just adding some plants and some candles or something just to create your space to be calm. I have went from the loft of having my office in Las Vegas that was beautiful, overlooked the um, valley. I had a beautiful window to look out of to the basement, night and day different. Now I'm on the lower level of our three-story townhome that we're in at the moment. And it's different. I've not been in a basement, but it's a walkout basement. I'm next to a window. I'm next to a sliding glass door. There's plenty of green hills to look at and beautiful homes around me and trees of all things. Can't get enough trees. And the sky, got to see the sky. I've got all of that. Very different environment. It was always really hot though. That's the part I didn't love in Las Vegas was that loft was always kind of stifling warm where now I'm in the basement where it's the opposite. It's kind of cozy, you know, and this is September that I'm recording this. <laughs> I can only imagine. As I record more, I will probably have some space heaters in the background because I know the winter is going to get a little cooler. Your environment is so important. It is 100% survival. It is a necessity to enjoy your environment, not just your home indoors, but outdoors as well. Again, which is why I had to jump ship and move. And you're just not feeling that calm energy. And as an empath, I don't even know how I lasted 15 years in Las Vegas with a, a city that never sleeps. You can feel that energy of go, 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 go all the time. It's straining your body. And then there's the superficial and now add all the crime that we've had. It just keeps growing and increasing daily there. 
this just, you've got negative energies all around you. You're battling that, especially as a spiritual girl, a Christian girl that's got the Holy Spirit living within her and dealing with that negative demonic energy around you all the time. Talk about spiritual warfare. It's massive. No wonder my soul was just torn. Like, get me out of here. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I just can't. So let's jump on to number seven. This is a good one. A community of fellow empaths. How nice would it be to be around others that get you? It's a unique experience. And between HSPs, highly sensitive people and empaths, there's about 30% of the population. If you combine both of us, empaths alone are less than 10%. It's really tiny, small group, but that's a lot of people out of 7 billion on the planet. If those are accurate numbers, there's tons of Facebook groups out there for empaths. Be careful, be cautious. A lot of them will steer you towards the woo woo new age way of life and away from the path of Jesus. But be careful, use your intuition, use your spiritual discernment if you're a Christian like me. But there's a lot of us out there. It's nice to be around people that get us. It's nice to be around that. My daughter's super sensitive. Her boyfriend's super sensitive. They just get it. I have friends that are sensitive. It's very nice to be around others that understand. You can lean on each other for support, guidance, and mutual understanding. And it's empowering to know that we have other people who just get us, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's why we go to church. You want to be around other believers. You know, you want to worship Jesus together with your people, the body of Christ. So important. So important. So jump into number eight. This is a good one, guys. Empaths and others need a sense of purpose. Sometimes it's just leading a movement. Sometimes it's just becoming a parent. Sometimes it's just tackling a project of of a charity in your own community or being on a board, a board member of something that matters to you. Having a purpose gives us a reason to look forward to waking up every morning. My daughter is, I've just been picking on her a lot lately. She is a perfect example. She's having some challenges with our move because she's not working right now. She's like, I need a purpose, mom. I need a job. And it's not even just the money. It's just, I need to, I need to feel like I have a reason to get up every day. It fills our life with fulfillment, more color, more joy. And pass are deep feeling beings and we crave meaning in our lives. It's essential. And, you know, a lot of people think that having a purpose is truly happiness. It's the only thing that combats depression. The opposite of depression isn't happiness, it's purpose. That's something I'll quote from a lady on her podcast that said, that's exactly it. Kathy Heller is her name, I believe on her podcast, the opposite of depression isn't happiness, it's purpose. And it just struck me today going through this research as I was preparing for this podcast, how important that is. How important we really, really put purpose on the back burner and don't realize we need a reason. And yes, sometimes it's your kids. Got to get them off to school. Got to do this. Got to do that. Got to get groceries. My husband's coming home. I need to make dinner. You've got reasons. People that live alone have a little more challenges and need that sense of purpose because we don't even put ourselves first most of the time. We put everyone else ahead of us. It's a typical empath caring way of doing things. So let's find some more purpose and it can be big or small as long as it gets you out of bed with excitement and joy and feeling like you matter. What you do matters. That's all it takes. Jumping into number nine, creative expression, such as decorating a space or cooking a new meal. It can be a new hobby you do. You could be someone that likes to knit, crochet. I have a friend that's just super creative back in Vegas that's starting up her own baked goods. And I think she does a lot of canning and jarring. I don't even know if I'm saying that correct. Jarring. That doesn't even sound right, Carrie. Canning, I guess canning sauces and spices and jams and jellies. She's just really good at it. She's getting involved in the farmer's market. Something like that. You know, it should be something as simple as that, or it could be, you know, I'm going to redecorate a whole room, paint a mural, wallpaper this wall, do a feature wall, gut it, do a renovation to your home. I mean, it's something about it just lights you up. I'm on a little bit over on the overwhelm side of that. Um, 
just to go a little deeper with this recent move, I have been on overdrive <laughs> when you got three floors to decorate. And of course, my daughter has her space um, upstairs, but you know, you got living room, kitchen, dining room, make it all work within that, you know, your typical all in one room, open living concept. And then you've got other things going on and it's, it's, it takes the fun out of it when you feel like you want to get it all done right now. So I found that, okay, I've, I've mostly got everything unpacked. Now I get to go back and do a little more fine tuning. Like, yeah, I think I'm going to hang up another drape here. Or today I organized my books on my bookshelf and really got clear on where I wanted them to go. And I downsized a lot of books, still got my favorites. And that's just having, knowing I had that little bit to do today on my to-do list kind of gives you that sense of purpose. You know, you need that creative expression. Maybe you need to landscape your yard, get it ready for fall. Um, maybe try a new recipe, something different. Maybe you want to like change out all the plants in the house or your your throw pillows. Those are so much fun, aren't they? Oh my goodness. Go to Home Goods, going anywhere, sew your own. I don't care. Those are fun. I probably, I have still garbage bags full of throw pillows that I don't have any place for them for. We have to buy a new couch in our lower le lower level down here and I will find a home for them. Yes, I will. Throw pillow queen. I have, let's see. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pillows. Just throw pillows on my bed alone. <laughs> on my king size bed. And that's not including the three pillows to sleep on, you know, it's just crazy. So enjoy it. Find something to do, some, something creative, like a fun little project. Could be just getting stuff ready for fall and getting out some fall decorations or painting, pumpkins, whatever it looks like. That stuff just brings out a whole new person inside of you. You didn't even know it existed. You need to have that. You need that outlet. So jumping into number 10, maintaining diligent self-care habits so you don't get burned out. I always make sure I'm getting my nails done. Okay. Just to give you some, some, some tips, you know, paint the picture here. I mean, since we can sense other people's feelings, we know something's off, we want to make it better. So sometimes we're always caring for others, but our own self-care gets to be neglect, can be ne neglected. So how can we put ourselves back on that list? So we don't get burned out because burnout, burnout, burnout is real for real, 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 where you're just can't get enough sleep. Your brain is fried. Your can't even function. You can barely even form a sentence. We were like that after our move, me and Shyla both. We're like, don't even listen to me right now. I can't even form a sentence. <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It was burnout, 100%. We took a lot of downtime to regroup after that you know, challenging time. And apparently it's working because I can do this podcast, form a thought, form a sentence. But what does your self-care look like? With me, there's, of course, there's the typical maintenance of being a female, right? Got to color my hair, do my roots, touch that up, get a haircut, whatever that looks like. I like to get my nails and I always will get a pedicure till the day I die. And those things are just kind of a, an instant checklist. I think I got my roots done earlier today. I do them myself, you know, one less thing for my hairdresser to do. But ironically though, you know, add a few extras maybe it's a face mask, maybe it's a detox like type of bath with mineral salts or a massage. I'm looking for a new massage place. Again, being in a new place, new city, you're, everything's different and you don't trust yourself and you're like, crap, should I just ask someone or should I just take a stab and hope for the best? I need a therapeutic massage. This girl's used, to, I'm used to getting at least one a month minimum, good 90 minute deep tissue. And I need to take care of myself. It's so good for your body. It's not just relaxation. It's lymph nodes and drainage and all the things from stress. So what does that look like? And put this on a calendar. If you're like me, if it's on a calendar, it'll get done. If it's scheduled, it'll get done. I'm a schedule-aholic. It's got to be on a list where I can see it. Make it a priority. Self-care sometimes looks like just going out with a friend or talking to my mom on the phone. Now she's a lot closer. I don't have to talk to her just on the phone, but sometimes self-care is just enjoying an afternoon of Hallmark movies. Yes. 
oh, season five of Virgin River came out recently and boy, did I binge watch that all weekend long. I did make it last about three days. I'm proud of myself, but dang, that's some good stuff. That to me is self-care. Unplug, go and just lose yourself in something yummy and delicious like that. It's not a Hallmark channel type show. It's on Netflix, but it's got the Hallmark vibes and it's got a lot of Hallmark actors in it as well. Number 11, daily movement. This is where I have to work hard on. If it's, even if it's just for a walk, you need to do exercise. Your body thrives on activity. Lately, my activity has been like manhandling a king size mattress up two flights of stairs or walking downstairs with more boxes or, you know, unpacking, taking out trash, <sighs> vacuuming, cleaning, dusting, drapes, all the things. That's not quite what I had in mind. I'm talking about more like repetitiveness. You know, it just, I mean, there's so much research that found that exercise isn't just important for your mind, your healthy body. It's important for your mind. It can do everything from improving your memory to lowering your stress. And when I say just take a, a long walk, stroll, it doesn't have to be a power walk. This will lower your cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone we don't want anything to do with, especially at my age, our age, whoever you are. Cortisol levels will kill you. It's stress and it's not good for us. And we just need to walk it off sometimes. Just walking it off. Get rid of that excess energy that you just absorbed all day. I bought a treadmill. It's in my office. I've got a, a community center here, actually a, a con a club house, I guess is the right term for our community, which has a pool, hot tub and a workout room. I can go do that. Even if it's just a slow walk. It's just a way of getting you more clear and letting go of the energy you absorb during the day. I like to do it towards the end of the day. Some of you might like to do it in the beginning of the day. I feel like I absorb a lot of energy throughout the day in the work environment and so on. And it's just a way for me to get rid of it. Let it all go. So number 12, sticking to a balanced and healthy diet. I have been doing intermittent fasting for I don't even know how long. And I'm going to start switching things up a little bit because I think your body gets used to the same thing, which hence is why I haven't lost weight or I've been kind of stuck. And not only is it what you eat, it's when you eat, you know, and what are you eating? Is it natural, whole foods? A lot of you know I've done holistic training and uh, my nutrition degree, degree or certification, giving myself way too much credit there, certification that I took back when my daughter was little to really learn the holistic way of healthy in ourselves, that food really is medicine. And what we put in our body has a lot to do with our brain, how it operates. When we, even when we put, drink too much caffeine as an empath, it can overstimulate our already sensitive nervous system something, you know, we rarely think about too much caffeine actually just increases that, which what's that going to do now? I'm overstimulated. Now I've got more overwhelm, anxiety, and stress. Sugar can also do that. Two things I love, caffeine, coffee, sugar, wine, all the things it's got sugar in it too. It can have a negative impact for us empaths and it can kind of give you those mood swings and anxiousness. So I know it's not always, sometimes the Cheetos are more fun than carrots, but you've just got to grab something healthy. I always like to make a pre-made salad, garden salad in the fridge, because it's just easy to throw it in a bowl, add your dressing and go to it. You know, it's something quick and fast, mostly for my daughter too, that likes quick, fast things to eat. It's just a better, better balance. I know it's so much faster to grab Cheetos or chips, but to grab something that's healthy and made by God himself was grown in the earth, you know, it's going to ground you and help you feel better. Number 13, this one's big. This one I can't always control, but man, isn't this is the truth. Holy cow. Number 13, space in your schedule. Us empaths do best when we have plenty of space in our schedules. We don't like back-to-back -back meetings or back-to-back -back events. When I would date the narcissist that I was dating last season, we'll just call it last season because it was the earlier part of this year. Oh my goodness. It was like, let's go do this and let's go do that. And then when we're going to go here and then we're going to go out to eat and then we're going to go to the bookstore and then we're going to go to this event. And then I want to take you out to eat. I was an overwhelm. He knew it. He didn't care. He was just sucking the life out of me because that's how they survive. 
other people that can go, go, go extroverts don't have this. I'm going to break if I don't get a break. (laughs) Literally, (laughs) I need breaks in between events. I need, if I'm going to go out with you later that night, I don't want to see you that morning. If we're going to have a full day, I'm going to want the evening to myself. I don't want back-to-back things. And I can't always control that because I consult for companies like Microsoft that are very fast-paced environment, and I don't always get to control my calendar. I can decline meetings, yes. But at times it's like, oh my goodness, they're overlapped and they're back-to-back and I don't even know who I am by the end of the day. Which way and direction I'm going? It's too much. So when I can control it, I like breathing room in between meetings. I like breathing room in between events. If I'm going to plan a brunch with a friend in the morning, I'm not going to plan a dinner in the evening with another friend. It's just too much for me. One event, big event, that's going to take a lot of energy a day. That's it. I'm going to go run errands all day. I'm probably not going to run out and do something that night. It's a little at a time, guys. Know your boundaries. Know your breaking points. Don't push yourself. You'll regret it. You'll feel really run down and disconnected from yourself. And you'll have this out-of-body experience, which is really being ungrounded. Don't do it. Don't do it. Space is so important to have. Just that recharge, reconnect, gives us a little breathing room so we can show up up as our best. If I have a day to myself and then I'm going to reconnect with a friend later that night, they're going to get, you know, chill, rested Carrie that's ready to pour from her cup not frazzled, empty, burned out carry that's got nothing to pour, nothing to pour out. So get, give yourself a break. Don't overwhelm and stress. No one gets a prize for that. No one, no one wins anything. Running from meeting to meeting is just not necessary. Now, number 14, as we wrap up this podcast, a go-to grounding technique. And I know we touched a little bit on this on the other steps, but You need to have a grounding technique. Sometimes it's just for five minutes. What does that look like? It gets us back into that relaxed state. Some of some of you guys are really good at just I'm going to check out for ten minutes and meditate. Turn off my brain. Meditate. Put your bare feet in the earth. That's huge. Bare feet in the grass. Breathe deeply. Go for a mindful walk. Some of you are really good at I'll just sometimes just pour myself a cup of coffee and stare out the window or sit on my patio or deck nothing happening. Don't need to think about a thing. Not trying to solve a problem, not trying to strategize anything. Just sit there, take in my environment, watch a bird, relax, back to grounding. We're the most powerful we can ever be when we're grounded. We're truly in that foundation space where we feel connected again, connected to the planet instead of flying around out there. I hate that feeling of being disconnected in my body. It's not fun, not fun at all. And number 15 is one I wanted to kind of add as a bonus because I like the number 15. I think honestly, the only way to survive as an empath with a loving relationship is to have someone that gets us. You need a partner. doesn't have to be also another empath. Nothing wrong with it if there is probably understand each other's boundaries better than anyone else is to have a spouse or loving partner, romantic relationship, whatever that looks like for you in your world that gets you, that truly gets you as an empath. I've dated men that are like, well, you're so fragile. What is wrong with you? Why are you like that? How come you're not like me? Why can't you just go, 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 go? And I would feel like I'd have to keep up and I would feel like I was breaking in the relationship. Nothing feels worse than when you're with a partner that doesn't get you. And then they start to make you question yourself. Well, why am I fragile? Why can't I do all? Why can't I keep up? What is going on with me? Why, why am I, why do I need a nap? Why does this person exhaust me? All the things. If you're with the ideal partner, that's like, you know what? I know I need to give you this much warning ahead of time before we do an event because you're going to need to reserve and store up some energy for that. That's your person. It's so much better. I've dated people that get it 
and are super genuine and generous with understanding and don't question you. Like, you know what? I'd love to do that, but I was just out the last two nights and I'm really needing a night to myself. And it doesn't cause an argument. It's okay. Let's push it back a day. Or maybe next week's better for you. Someone that loves you enough, that understands you and takes the time to understand you. Even if they're not an empath, they may not get it, but they're willing to learn and explore it. No different than if your partner loves a certain baseball team and you're like, I don't understand this. I don't even get the game, but he wants me to go with them. And I don't even know what he's saying half the time, but I'm going to learn the sport because I want to be supportive and enjoy this with him. I want to be his ride or die. So I'm going to understand it. You know, no different than my mom taking up hunting. My dad's a hunter still at age, soon to be 84. Calls her the other day because there was 10 deer in the yard, all excited. It's going to be always a piece of my dad. He was born on the first day of rifle season, November 15th. Every birthday out in a tree stand somewhere, out in the woods. It's who he is. She knew I'm going to have to learn this if I want some time with him. This is a great bonding experience together. Do that. And you want a partner and spouse that also gets you. And if you're new to this, learning about yourself, because I didn't learn till late 30s that I was an empath. Maybe you're just not figuring out you need these things too. What Carrie's talking about is super important. And it's, it's hitting home for me. But I've been married for 25 years and I don't know how to tell my spouse, I need this. This is why this doesn't work. This is the time to do a deep dive. Read them a blog about empaths. Research it online. Give them some statistics. Don't just say, I'm this way. Say, look, I'm learning about myself and I, I figured it out. There's nothing wrong with me. And trust me, sisters, there's nothing wrong with you. And brothers that, that listen to this. There's nothing wrong with you. There's a term for it. You're not crazy, but it's imperative that you have these 15 things in your life to thrive, not just survive. And if you're barely hitting any of them, maybe it is survival for you. But if you're already getting most, just these fine tunes and tweaking are going to help you thrive to that next level. I want you to thrive. I'm taking my own notes, sisters. I'm looking at my own life balance. Where does Carrie need to thrive? Where can I be to make myself whole and ready for that next last relationship? That's really the goal for my life is where is that next person? And where where do I get to find him? And when I really need to feel grounded and really connected with myself. And I don't want to date anyone that doesn't get what an empath is or doesn't even want to learn how important it is as us empaths that we need these things to survive and that there's not something wrong with me if i'm sometimes introverted and want to be alone or if i'm i'm all full and i'm ready to give all my love and energy jesus love and energy and jesus light to people that means i've taken that time to fill myself up because that's who i want to be i want to pull and pull people to Jesus and I want to shine a light on it. And I want to pour from a full cup every day. And the only way to do it is to hit these 15 things to really connect with who I am and know when I'm running on empty so I can refill, replenish and give back again. Jesus made me this way. He doesn't make mistakes and he made you that way too. I'm giving you permission to be yourself. Just like my upcoming book, permission to be all of me, the empath stuff, all of it straight out there. And I give you permission to be all of you too. I hope you found this podcast helpful. Share it with a friend, share it with someone that's just exploring who they are as an empath, maybe need some, some help and guidance and how does, you know, truly thrive as an empath instead of seeing it as, oh, this is this curse, something wrong with me. No, it's a superpower. You just need to know how to fine tune it and take care of it. Big hugs, big love. See you on the next episode. Hi there, friend. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and double check that you're subscribed or following. And if you've got a quick 30 seconds, it would mean the world to me if you could leave me a five-star review and share what you specifically liked about this episode. 